Arlen shoved his hands deep into his jacket pockets, bracing against the cold as he wound through the maze of streets leading to his apartment in Washington Heights. Tonight, the usual vibrancy of the neighborhood seemed drained, replaced with a dark, oppressive quiet. The streetlights flickered, casting trembling shadows across the cracked pavement, and a faint mist curled around the corners of the buildings, blurring the edges of everything in his path. It was late, and Arlen's feet ached. His shift at the restaurant had stretched longer than usual, and exhaustion dragged at his limbs. He glanced down the narrow alley between two abandoned buildings, an unlit shortcut he'd taken dozens of times before. He hesitated, listening for any sound beyond the hum of distant traffic. Silence. Just a quick cut through here, he thought, and he'd be home in minutes. Arlen took a deep breath and stepped into the alley. The air was different here, stale and thick, with a cloying, metallic scent that made his stomach tighten. He pressed on, swallowing his discomfort. Shadows clung to the walls, darker than the night itself, giving the alley an unnatural depth. But then halfway through, he stopped short, eyes catching a strange, dark form lying a few feet ahead. At first, he thought it was a pile of discarded rags, or perhaps a homeless man sleeping off the night. But as he inched closer, a glint caught his eye, something metallic buried deep into the figure's back. It was a man, sprawled face down on the ground, his arms twisted awkwardly beneath him. A kitchen knife protruded from his back, the handle worn and chipped. Blood, dark and glistening, had pooled around him, its sickly scent mingling with the damp alley air. Arlen's breath caught, a sharp intake that sounded too loud in the narrow alley. Panic clenched at his throat, and for a moment he was rooted to the spot, unable to move, unable to look away. His mind raced, leaping between a hundred half-formed thoughts. Had someone seen him enter the alley? Was the killer still here? He swallowed, fighting down a wave of nausea, but the stench was overwhelming, and he forced himself to step back. His eyes remained locked on the corpse, though his body was screaming to turn away, to run. There was something about the man's stillness that gnawed at him, a heavy emptiness that hung in the air. He didn't look like a stranger. Something in his face, partially visible in the dim light, seemed oddly familiar like the neighbor he passed every day without truly noticing. Arlen's fingers trembled, inching toward his phone, but a chilling thought rooted him in place. What if calling the police made him look suspicious? Who would believe he just stumbled upon a body? Would they question why he was walking through a desolate alley so late at night? The thought of police lights flooding the scene, of officers swarming and questioning him, twisted his gut with dread. Without thinking, he turned and bolted, his footsteps echoed, bouncing off the brick walls, accelerating with each step. He could still smell the blood, feel the weight of the dead man's eyes lingering on him, though he'd barely even seen his face. The darkness swallowed him as he ran, nearly blind with fear, until he burst out of the alley and stumbled onto the main street. The lights of his apartment were a beacon, steady and safe, promising warmth and oblivion. Arlen fumbled with his keys, his hands shaking so badly he almost dropped them. When he finally slipped into his apartment, he slammed the door behind him, collapsing against it as his heart thundered in his chest. The silence in his apartment was suffocating, pressing in on him as he struggled to catch his breath. But he couldn't shake the image. Every time he closed his eyes, he saw it again. The still form, the dark, wet blood, the glint of the knife. He tried to drown it out with music, with television even with a few too many shots of whiskey, but nothing worked. The man's face, half seen, smeared with blood, burned into his mind. In the days that followed, Arlen kept his head down, avoiding the alley and pretending nothing had happened. He went to work, listened to his co-workers joke and laugh, and forced himself to smile along with them, his mind a million miles away. Every time he passed a stranger on the street, he felt their eyes linger on him a little too long, as if they somehow knew. He barely slept, tossing and turning in bed, haunted by the sight he'd stumbled upon. Each morning he half expected to see police cars parked outside his building, to hear a knock on his door, to have to explain why he hadn't reported what he'd seen. But no one came. Days passed without any news of the body in the alley, no mention in the papers, no signs of investigation. It was as if the man had never existed, 
as if Arlen had dreamed the whole thing. He began to wonder if he was losing his mind, if maybe the stress and exhaustion had conjured up a vision too real to shake. Then late one night, a few days after the discovery, he felt something shift in the air. His phone buzzed, a text from an unknown number. The message was brief, no more than a few words, but it sent a chill down his spine. You left him. Arlen's blood ran cold. He glanced around his empty apartment, searching for signs of anyone watching him, but the room was silent, the lights casting soft shadows against the walls. His hands shook as he gripped his phone, his mind spinning. How could anyone know? His pulse pounded in his ears, and his mouth went dry as he typed back, hands trembling. Who is this? What do you want? The seconds stretched, each heartbeat louder than the last, and then the response flashed onto his screen. He's waiting. Arlen's mind swirled with terror, the words on the screen blurred as his vision fogged, his heart hammering as he grappled with what it meant. The message seemed to seep into his skin, turning his blood to ice. He thought of the dark alley, the dead man, and the feeling of being watched, as if someone had been there, unseen watching him flee. A twisted, gut-wrenching thought crept into his mind. He could almost hear the words in a voice not his own. What if he's not done with you? As he sat there paralyzed in his apartment, he realized that escaping the alley might not have meant he'd truly escaped at all. Arlen sat in the darkness of his apartment, clutching his phone, his pulse thrumming like a war drum. The message lingered on the screen, mocking him with its cryptic, haunting simplicity. He's waiting. The words held an eerie weight, as if they weren't merely text but an omen. He tried to steady his breath, pressing his back against the wall as if he could melt into it, disappear. He glanced at the clock on his phone, but the time had lost meaning. The hours bled into each other, stretching painfully slow. Arlen's mind reeled with memories he wished he could erase. The man in the alley, the knife, the blood, the terrible stillness, and now this stranger who knew somehow what he'd done, or rather, what he hadn't done. The dread was beginning to gnaw at his sanity. He felt his own guilt twisting, shifting into something like fear of punishment. Perhaps he should have called the police, reported what he'd seen, but that would have tied him to it, would have given his fears solid form. Now it was too late. He'd have to face whatever was coming. Another message appeared on his phone, the screen lighting up his darkened apartment like a beacon. You can't ignore him forever. A chill crept down his spine. He didn't know who was sending these messages or how they knew. Perhaps it was the killer. Perhaps it was some twisted stranger playing with his mind. His hands shook as he typed a reply. Who are you? A moment later, the response came, but it wasn't what he expected. Instead of a name, it was a location, a set of coordinates. Arlen swallowed hard, dread thickening in his throat. He hesitated, hovering over the coordinates before opening his Maps app. The screen loaded slowly, each second stretching into eternity, until the app finally displayed the place. It was only a few blocks away, a vacant lot next to the same alley he'd taken that night. His mind rebelled, screaming at him to turn off his phone, to shut it all out. But another part of him, the part that had grown restless and haunted over these last few days, knew he couldn't. The nightmare wouldn't end until he faced it. He grabbed his jacket, hardly able to feel his own legs as he moved, as if propelled by something outside himself. The night air felt heavier than usual, thick and oppressive, pressing down on him as he walked the empty streets. The city felt deserted, as though all life had been drained from it, leaving only shadows and memories. His footsteps echoed in the silence, loud enough to make him flinch, half expecting someone or something to answer back. When he arrived at the vacant lot, he stopped, heart pounding in his chest like a frantic caged animal. There was no one around, no movement in the shadows, just the eerie stillness of the night. He glanced around, his skin prickling with anticipation and fear. For a moment, he thought it might be a cruel joke, some elaborate prank. But then he saw it, a small object lying on the ground, glinting faintly in the dim light from a nearby street lamp. He crouched down, his hand hovering over it before he could bring himself to pick it up. It was a phone, old, worn, with a cracked screen 
and dried blood smudged along the edges. Arlen's stomach lurched as he turned it over in his hand, feeling the grime of dried blood against his skin. And then it buzzed. He dropped it, his heart racing as if it might burst out of his chest. The screen flickered, and a new message appeared on the cracked display, barely legible through the spiderweb of fractures. Look closer. A twisted curiosity overpowered his fear, and he picked the phone up again. The message app was open, displaying a conversation, a series of messages all sent to his own number. Each message was a piece of that night. In the alley. You left him. He's waiting. And at the bottom, a final message flashed onto the screen before his horrified eyes. You were always meant to see him. Arlen stumbled back, dropping the phone as if it had burned him. His mind raced with questions, each more frantic than the last. How had this stranger known where he'd be that night? Why had they wanted him to find the body? And most chillingly, what did they want from him now? A sudden rustling sound broke the silence, coming from the mouth of the alley. He froze, his heart hammering in his chest as a figure emerged from the shadows. For one horrible moment, he thought it was the man he'd seen lying dead in the alley, somehow risen, brought back to haunt him. But as the figure drew closer, he could make out different features, a different face, one he didn't recognize. The man was tall, his face half hidden in shadow, his expression unreadable. He moved with a deliberate slowness, as if savoring each step, his gaze locked onto Arlen's with a cold intensity. You shouldn't have run that night, he said, his voice a low, menacing murmur that slithered into Arlen's bones. Arlen opened his mouth, but no words came. Fear had tightened around his throat like a vice, rendering him mute. The man stepped closer, his gaze unflinching. You saw him, he continued, his voice dripping with accusation. You saw him, and you left him there. You think that comes without consequence? Arlen's mind raced, searching for any excuse, any way to explain himself. But what could he say? He hadn't killed that man, hadn't even known him. He had only seen him. But somehow this stranger held him accountable, as if simply witnessing the scene had implicated him. I didn't know, Arlen managed his voice barely above a whisper, each word trembling. I didn't. I thought, the man's eyes narrowed, a flicker of disdain passing over his face. It doesn't matter what you thought. You saw what you were meant to see. And now, he took a step back, his voice lowering to a chilling whisper. He's coming for you. Arlen's blood ran cold, his limbs frozen in place. The man disappeared into the shadows as silently as he'd come, leaving Arlen alone with a mounting sense of dread that seemed to seep into his bones. The world around him felt warped, twisted, as if he were walking through a nightmare he couldn't wake from. He staggered back, feeling the world shift beneath his feet. His mind was a storm of terror and confusion, his thoughts muddled with visions of that night, of the blood-soaked alley, of the figure lying in stillness. And then, a final text buzzed on his own phone, the screen lighting up with a familiar, ominous phrase. He's waiting. He turned, feeling the weight of something pressing in on him, something inescapable, as if the alley were calling him back to where it had all begun. The silence around him grew heavier, and in that suffocating darkness, he understood with chilling clarity. He hadn't just stumbled upon a dead man. He'd stumbled into something darker, something that demanded he return, that he faced the consequences of what he left behind. His only choice now was to go back, to confront whatever awaited him in the shadows of that alley. And this time he feared he might never escape.